Hello everyone, I am Rohit and welcome to my YouTube channel Era Era. So guys, in this particular video, I am going to create a classification machine learning model that will predict a wine quality. So before moving towards our Jupyter notebook, I would like to tell you that I am created a videos on Pandas library as well as on NumPy library. So if you want to learn a data science or in future if you want to become data science, then start with both this library will give you initial confidence so it's my humble request to you to please access those library and subscribe my youtube channel that is AI era and press this bell icon and never miss an any update so the main motto of today's video is to create a machine learning model that will predict a wine quality therefore we require a wine quality data set as from previous video we download our data set from Kaggle website in, the, in this video, we also download our dataset from same website such as Kaggle. So, in Kaggle website, here is my dataset that is red wine quality dataset. So, by clicking on download button, I can download it the dataset. So, just I simple click it on this download button and you can see over here the dataset is get downloaded. The next step is to store a dataset in our PC at a particular folder. The link of this dataset is given in the description below. So you also can access this dataset for your further reference or for your practice. So after downloading this dataset, I can store it in my folder and by using OS library, I can choose my dataset from a particular folder or access uh, my dataset from that location. So without doing any delay, just jump into a Jupyter Notebook. So guys, here I am in my Jupyter Notebook. So before starting, the first step is to start any machine learning algorithm or creating any machine learning model is to import a necessary library. My necessary library contains my pandas, my numpy, also a data visualization library such as matplotlib, seaborn, os library and sklearn library. So in the first cell, I have to import pandas as pd. The pandas library is basically used to read a dataset. Import numpy as np. A numpy library is used to perform a mathematical operation. Numpy library is handle a various kind of mathematical operation. A matplotlib library is to generate and visualize the dataset. Also, we import a seaborn library as sns to generate graphs and visualize the dataset. We use a os library to change or select a particular working directory. So here, I can save my dataset in e drive in pandas folder. So I can set my current working directory in e drive in pandas folder. Therefore, I can access my dataset very easily. So to execute this file also, before moving toward execution, I would like to tell you that in this first cell, I will also import my sklearn library. That sklearn library will provide me uh, various kind of uh, classifiers also you can just google it sklearn and read a documentation by reading this documentation you also get information about various classifier that we use in our today's video to execute this file or to execute this cell we have to press and shift enter in jupyter notebook we basically press a shift enter or just click on this run button to execute our cell when this asteroid is get converted into number, this my particular cell is get run successfully. Okay, you can see over here, the square bracket shows the number 1. So, the my first cell is get executed successfully and the necessary library is imported successfully. So, the next step is to import a data set and the data set is imported by writing a df is equal to pd.read underscore csv and in close parenthesis, I will have to mention my dataset with its extension. Basically, in machine learning or in data science, we particularly use a comma separated value or .csv format for our dataset. Then to visualize the dataset, uh, we just have to simply say df.head and this command will show me first five rows of my dataset and its features. So I can execute this cell. So you can see over here. It will give me a first five rows and the feature. After that, I can print the information of my dataset. 
So total 12 features are present in my data set and all features are non-null means uh, no missing value are present in my data set. Also it contains total 1599 entries means total 1599 rows contains my data set and the memory uses my data set is the 150 KB. After that we didn't know my dependent variable also my independent variable. So the main aim of our today's video is to predict quality of the wine. Therefore, I have to create a correlation matrix and find out the which variable which has a highly correlation value with my quality feature. And I can choose this variable as my input feature and my quality as my output feature. So to find correlation between variables, I can simply have to write a code df dot core or df dot correlation and close close parenthesis after that I have to simply write t that will convert our correlation matrix into transpose matrix and believe me guys this when we convert our matrix into transpose matrix this matrix is a uh, readable as compared to without transpose matrix so it is very good practice to convert our matrix into transpose matrix particularly this node is applicable very much applicable when we create a correlation matrix for execution this cell i have to just press and shift enter it shows me my feature and the correlation of my variable in the in this matrix so first of all the alcohol which shows a large correlation with my quality input feature uh, sorry my quality output feature that is 0 0.46 0 0.476 after that sulfate shows a 0.25 and after that my citric acid which shows a 0.02263 so after that we have to define our variable therefore from correlation matrix we know that the alcohol sulfates and citric acid which show a very good correlation with my output feature Therefore, I can take as my input feature and quality as my output feature. To execute this cell, I have to press and shift enter. To visualize a data, um, here I can create a joint plot by using a Seaborn library. So, first of all, I will create joint plot of two variables, that is alcohol and quality, then by sulfate and quality, and the last citric acid and quality. To just visualize our data, we create this graph. To execute this cell, I have to press and shift enter. So you can see over here, we just created plot by simply saying SNS, SNS dot join plot and we have to give our X variable that is alcohol and Y variable that is quality. We have to choose or you can select any color, but I like the red color very much. Therefore, I can select uh, color is red and I select a kind that is KD. KD is nothing but my kernel density estimator. So you can see over here in alcohol it will show and, uh, uh, and in y axis it will show a quality at a point over here it shows a phi number so I can say that at a, a quality of phi and uh, an alcohol uh, in between ranges in between 9 to 10 it will have a large amount of data set so as same as we can create a joint plot and the kind is a kernel density estimator we can create a joint plot of sulfate and quality and last one is citric acid and quality so after data visualization you can see over here it will shows me a density of largely populated point uh, so you can visualize over here the maximum point are in between 9 to 10 range of alcohol and at a at an at in quality it lies between 5 to 6 as same as you can read the next two graph that is sulfate and quality as well as citric acid and quality so the next is create a classifier so in last video that is a diabetes prediction video we can create a classifier using my multilayer perceptron classifier here we can or we can choose this is our first classifier we can choose a uh, many classifier in this uh, in this lecture this is our first classifier and we can see how much accuracy it will give us 
so to execute this cell i have to press and shift enter i i simply import my mlp classifier from sklearn.neural network import mlp classifier and i can initiate my classifier uh, and save in the variable called clf and i can mention my hidden layer size that is 100 and i can uh, mention my activation is logistic i can use a logistic activation function because i have to classify between various classes and logistic function give me a binary output that is 0 or either 1 so therefore i can use the activation function such as logistic after that i have to feed the data set by simply saying clf.feed that is x and y where x is my variable you can see over here and y is my variable that is quality so we can trend test and split our data set therefore i can simply say from sql under model underscore selection import trend test split and i can trend test split my data set and i keep my test size is 0.25 i can predict my data set clf dot predict and uh, in close parenthesis extend and i can save it in my variable called y predict after that i have to check my accuracy score okay so mlp multi rare perceptron classifier will give me a uh, class accuracy of around 55 percent and next is to create a classification report okay so so we can conclude that by uh, seeing that accuracy score and classification report the mlp classifier it does not provide a very good result so we have to move towards our next classifier called decision tree classifier to execute this particular cell so in the first cell i have to import my decision tree classifier by simply writing from sklearn.3 import decision tree classifier and i have to press and shift enter after that i have to initialize my variable by saying clf.decisiontreeclassifier and fit my data i create a my predict variable by simply saying y predict is equal to clf.predict and in close parenthesis x underscore trend and i and the next i have to calculate my accuracy score so guys you can see over, over here it will give me a 99 percent of accuracy a decision tree classifier will give me a 99 percent of accuracy the next is i have to print a classification report okay also classification report also shows a very good result as compared to my mlp classifier the next is select a uh, ne nearest neighbor classifier so by same method i have to import my can and or nearest neighbor classifier by simply typing from sklearn.neighbor import k neighbors classifier for import or to execute this cell i have to press and shift then i have to import or initialize my classifier by simply saying clf dot k neighbors classifier and i have to choose a hyperparameter such as number of neighbors is equal to 24 so here i can select a uh, total number of neighbors that is 24 and I, and I can fit my data set after fitting my data set i have to generate a y predict and after that i have to check my accuracy knn algorithm or knn model give me accuracy around a 61 percent or 60.96 and the next is a support vector classifier so from us sklearn.svm import a support vector classifier to importing or to execute this cell i have to press and shift enter after that i have to fit my data and initialize my classifier after initializing and fitting my data i have to create my prediction variable that is y predict by simply saying clf.predict and in close parenthesis i have to give an a x value of x trend and after that i can simply print accuracy score and accuracy score it will give me around a 0.56 oh it's very poor it's closely to our the mlp classifier from our three classifier the only decision tree will give us highest result that is highest accuracy score that is 0.99 percent and the last and the second last is my sgd classifier that is 
stochastic gradient descent classifier so i can import it from sklearn by simply saying from sklearn.linear model import sgd classifier and i can initialize my classifier after that i can fit my data after fitting my data i can create my predict variable that is y predict is equal to clf.predict and in close parenthesis i will have to mention my extend data set after that i can print my accuracy score by simply importing accuracy score from sklearn.matrix i can by using this code i can print my accuracy score so very poor very poor it will give me only 0.46 so you can see guys up till now our decision tree is on top of as compared to uh, as in the rank of accuracy score decision tree algorithm or my decision tree classifier will give me uh, 99% of accuracy and no other than classifier will go on above the 60% and the last classifier that we use in this today's video is known as random forest classifier for importing this classifier we can simply write from sklearn dot ensemble import random forest classifier and to execute this file i have to press and shift enter and the next cell i have to initialize my classifier by simply saying cf clf is equal to random forest classifier and i have to fit my data set after fitting my data set i have to predict my data set for prediction I just simply say y pred is equal to clf dot predict and in close parenthesis i have to give the value of x10 and after that i have to print the accuracy score so random forest will give me accuracy score which is much closer to our decision tree accuracy score it will give me a 96% around a 97% of accuracy so we can conclude that for a particular wine quality problem my decision tree classifier will work very good will work not only good it will work uh, excellently and it will gives me a result a very good result it will give me around it will give me around a 99% of accuracy guys this is enough for today's video so if you like this video please like it share with your friend and do subscribe my youtube channel that is ai era and don't forget to press and bell icon and never miss an any update so if you want give any suggestion or if you feel that if something wrong with the video or something wrong with the tutorial then please comment it out thank you one and all